yeah, I know I'm that nigga. I still gotta give all my glory to the Lord. How do I moonwalk on niggas like two good toes to keep my spirit go? I'm trying to keep decking up. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Just to ask you a couple of questions. Um, uh, I know you're from the DMV, but what area specifically are you from? Okay, so I'm from, like, right now I live in Bowie. So, mm-hmm. I mean, but I'm not really, like, because what I, I was born in Ghana. So I came to America when I was, like, six. And then I lived in, like, Silver Spring in, like, Moco for, like, five, five years. Then I lived in Greenbelt for, like, another four years. Then I lived in Lago for two years. Now I live in Bowie ever So you just hopped around Maryland, basically, after you got off? Yeah. Got from yeah, like, all, all around, like, the DMV-ish. What part of Ghana? If you, you want to say the place I lived the most, i say, yeah, definitely Bowie, so, yeah. Bowie, that's what's up. Yeah. And what part of Ghana are you from? I got to actually visit in 2015, and I kind of went around the country oh, word. a little bit. So I'm from Accra, and it's a it's a little it's a little place it's a little area called Dakuma, so that's where I'm from. Oh, that's what's up. I got to Accra was the first place I visited, and it was beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I just went uh when I go, I went like uh, January. Yeah, I just went January. Oh, welcome back. That's oh. I uh, know. So yeah, it was nice. Um. So my next question is, I know that. Uh, you formerly went as J.O., and your name mm-hmm. now is Foggy Ra. Why that switch up? How'd you make that name change? So, it was, a, well, Foggy Ra was, like, it was, my career was actually really ugly, like, because I was, like, making songs, like, I would put songs out, and I would begin, like, 50,000, 100,000 plays, but I wouldn't get, like, any followers because my name was J.O., and there was, like, hella J.O., and there's, like, a, a this dude called J.O. Felony. Like, he's another big rapper from back in the day. So it's like people could never find me. Uh-huh. And then, but my, uh, my at name was Always Foggy Raw on Instagram. So it would be like, it was random. But that was like a childhood, like, name I had, like, from, uh, my friends, they would just call me Nana Foggy Raw. And then when I made it Instagram, I just made it Foggy Raw. But that was always my at name. So then I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to make my artist name for you, Roy. And I'm not even going to tell people I'm changing my name. I'm just going to literally just let it only be for you, all, And eventually it'll stick. And that's what I... That's interesting because when I was doing my research on you, I was like, I didn't know. I listened to Rice for Breakfast years ago and I liked it. Mm-hmm. And I never knew that was you. And I was like, how did wow. I not recognize that this is the same artist? That's crazy. Um, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, my voice sounds way different, though. That's also very true. Um, yeah. So the way I like to kick off every interview is I ask my artists who's their top five favorite artists. It doesn't have to only be hip-hop or rap only. Okay. Well, mine's definitely going to be hip-hop and rap <laughs> and it's some R&B probably. Okay. But uh, my favorite, so my, my favorite artist, like the one that I spent the most time listening to as a kid is definitely Chameleon there. Wow. UGK is up there. Yeah, yeah, Kamehameha is up there for me. Uh, UGK is up there. Kanye is up there. Lil Wayne is up there. And then I'm going to have to say... Mm, I'm going to say Michael Jackson. Okay. Just to be safe. Yeah. That's a real eclectic group. I wasn't expecting yeah, familiar yeah, okay. at all. I know. Yeah, that's one that yeah, I love him, man. Yeah, the person I always throw in there that throws people off is Common. I absolutely love him. Um, and I appreciate, like, real lyricism, which is actually the reason why um, I appreciate you and your music because within your career, you've made this shift more towards mumble rap, but you're not the typical uh-huh. mumble rap artist. Do you have... Uh-huh. Um, can you kind of explain how you found yourself in that style of rap? So... It basically, it really started because like, when I first started rap, it was uh, my boy. He was a uh, he like you know they were like it was a bunch of dudes, but they were like a bunch like serious like you know rap about serious stuff like backpack you know like it's intelligent kind of rap. 
but I would always come in the studio and just be like, uh, but I think my first rap, when I said something like, let it tomato, pickles and relish, and I was just trying to have fun, they was like, nah, that's trash, don't be that. So then I was like, damn, I kind of got to be more serious. So I was kind of always suppressing that loop side for me. And then when I, uh, we all went to the same school. So the minute I transferred school and got on my own, that's when I was like, all right, I'm just doing raps the way I want to do them. And then that's when I kind of started to let go a little bit. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any opinion on the hate that mumble rap does get? Especially since... Oh, yeah. I think uh, I think it's real lazy. Like I just feel like it's like because you know it's funny. Like a lot of times, if you ask people, it's like, "Oh, I hate mumble rap," but he's like, "Oh yeah, I like Lil. I mean, Lil Rupi's cool. Oh yeah, young thug, he's a genius. They go, they go hard." But it's just like, but they just say, "Oh, but I hate mumble rap." So it's like, what do you really? What what is it that you really hate? You know what I'm saying? Like I think mumble rap is a lazy term to just be like, "I hate," like. Uh, I hate people who dye their hair red, or I hate people who rap about lean. Like it just—it's not really about the rapping. I don't personally think. Okay. But they like to like tie the two in together. Like they like to tie the culture of what they think mumble rap is. So I think it's a real lazy argument. And at the end of the day, you know, the music gets played, so somebody's on. <laughs> That's very yeah. true. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people like to say, "Oh." forget mumble rap and like it's really not that great but if we look at the artists that are really popular right now that's what's uh dictating the culture at the moment um, exactly so it has to be somewhat popular but i know you said you were going to school with some dudes when you first started rapping and i know you told me you recently graduated from Bowie state um for the people that are rapping in school a lot of questions I get is how do people maintain that rap career as well as school? Could you kind of explain how you did that with your experience? Okay, yeah. Well, my journey, this is actually really, it's going to sound wild, but if it wasn't for the fact that I didn't do so bad at school, and it wasn't like terrible, but I did pretty bad for what a good student should be doing. Okay. So if it wasn't for that fact and me changing my major and spending like extra years in school, I probably would have just stopped rapping because it actually really is hard to balance the two. Um, I guess my advice would be like, just like you're not going to be able to have fun and do well in school and actually keep up your rap career. So it's kind of like, you probably gonna have to sacrifice, like, you know, your little everyday whatever, having fun life, and then, you know, just focus. All the extra time you get, you just focus, you know, and making music and perfecting your craft. That's probably what I would say. Yeah, that that completely makes sense. Um, even within holding my blog and stuff, trying to maintain this blog in past classes, and I'm even taking... Three- oh, it's, I bet it's so hard, oh, yeah. Oh, it's so rough. So I can only imagine when you're trying to constantly create, and you're trying to constantly create ideas for school at the same time. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Um, I know we were talking about Ghana earlier. Could you kind of explain how your Ghanaian background has affected your sound, or has it affected your sound or culture at all? Okay, well, it definitely, in, like, in slight ways, probably, like, I get stuff to reference, you know, from Ghana, but it doesn't really super affect my sound, but I say that, like, Ghana is always just in my head, and it makes me just work on music hard, because, like, coming from there, like, you know, like, people are really struggling, like, and, you know, it's like, you might think you struggle in America, but it's like, you don't really struggle compared to how they struggling back home in Ghana. So it always had it in my head, like, oh, you got to grind hard. Like, you got to put in more hours because you got to do it just for all your family who wouldn't even get the opportunity to do music even if they were talented. Mm. So that's how it affects me, if anything. That's dope that you even have that type of understanding of your blessings and where you are in life right now in comparison to back home, um, a lot of people don't have that type of appreciation. or It's not typical for people mm-hmm. our age to have that type of appreciation. So um, I really respect that. 
Now, in an interview back in 2015, you said something that really hit me, um, that your music represents Christ, and because you represent Christ, you make music. Can you kind of clarify that and explain the whole God is my boast gear that you rock? Okay. So, the, uh, that line, basically, it was because it was at a time where, you know, my music, I was kind of making, like, love-type songs. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily love-type songs, but just life dealing with God. So, people would be like, oh, I thought you were, like, a Christian. You always talk about girls, though. So, I'd be like, well, it, I mean, if I, if a Christian paints, like, paints a picture about, you know, going to the store and getting milk. Well, that's just like a Christian version of going to the store and getting milk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like if a gangster did it, it would be like, oh, that's a gangster version of going to the store and getting milk because it's coming from his perspective. So I just felt like it's not that I have to rap about Jesus or his song. It's just like if, I, if I'm a Christian, then everything's going to come from my Christian perspective. So if I make music, then it's just Christian music. And God is my boast is just like, you know, that's just more so like, because I know my music sounds like hella arrogant at times, but just kind of like reinforcing that it's not actually arrogant. It's like I'm actually taking pride in God, and that's what, you know, that's what I lean on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I was always really wondering what that meant. That's actually a super dope way of saying that. Yeah. Wow. Um, so with time comes growth, how would you say that your sound has evolved from that kind of point you were talking about, or even your first project release, Rice for Breakfast, to where you're at now with Octavius Vandross? Well, you said, how has my sound evolved? Yeah. Oh, God. I think, um, dang, do I, okay, from Back to the Rice and all that stuff, uh, you know what's funny? I I really I, I don't know if you've heard the whole back to the rights because I don't really have it on like SoundCloud no more. But I honestly feel like it's a little bit similar. It's just more grown up. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's actually how yeah. I would describe it. Like you've had more life experiences and mm-hmm. more of a a time to kind of voice how you feel. <clears throat> in exactly, a more and, and time way. to just practice some music. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I think it's very similar. So I wouldn't say it's changed that much, to be honest. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Now, within your videos and stuff, you're always kind of jigging and rapping. You're really chill, laid back. Is that a goal of yours, or is that just kind of how your vibe is? Even from talking to you, it seems like you're just a laid back kind of dude. But... Yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> not really, like, too scripted or anything like that. Yeah, you had me cracking up with your dancing in um, <laughs> the latest video you dropped. I can't recall the name. Yeah, now, but I probably, was like, probably. Yeah, probably. I was done. I was like, wow, he's, he's just, it has to come to you naturally. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, we did that on the fly, like super on the fly. Oh, wow. Um, can you kind of explain yeah. the way you made that video process or kind of how, what your mindset is when you're going to go shoot a video to one of your songs? <laughs> Yeah, my mindset is when I'm going to shoot a video, I'm like, I I feel like I want people to understand who I am through the video. So through my dressing, through my, the way I move, through the way I, I, like, my facial expressions, like, I just want people to understand who I am. And I feel like if people can take the video and be like, oh, I I feel him, like, I see who he is, then I feel like that's my goal right there. Okay. Um, well, you definitely yeah. get that across in all of your vids. Um, with that being said, what is your favorite song or performance you've done so far? Uh, what is my favorite performance? Uh, well, my favorite song is probably this song called Pull Up To Ya. It's on my Foggy Town EP. And uh, it's actually like probably one of my least played songs, but it's like, like that is definitely my favorite song. And... Uh, Favorite performance? Damn, I can't remember. But it was a, it was an old one though. I think it was in Virginia or something. Yeah, it was in Virginia. It was in like Woodbridge, I think. Mm. It was probably like two or three years ago. But yeah, that was the first time I performed, and like people knew my words. And this was way before 
God is my bones or any of that stuff. Okay. Um, that's dope. Yeah. I actually stay out in Woodbridge, like right next to Woodbridge. Um, oh, word. But, so for, I don't know how many interviews you've done. I've watched a couple. But what is a question that you wish that your supporters or interviewers would stop asking you? Oh, what does fuck you all mean? <laughs> Why? It, it's just a vibe. <laughs> I don't know. It don't got to mean anything. Um, That's understandable. I'm glad I didn't ask that question because I did kind of <laughs> wonder. <laughs> um, so... Do you have, what's your plan, like, maybe, like, a five-year plan? I'm a, a long-term planner. So do you have, like, a three- to five-year plan for your career or something that you want to get done in your career within the next three to five? Um, to be honest, all I really want to do is just grow. I don't really, like, make plans like that, bro. Okay. Um, I can completely feel that. So where can we can catch you performing next? Uh, oh no, the phone. The house phone is on? Yeah, I still have a house phone. <laughs> okay. Um, so my last question, or last couple questions is, where can we catch you performing next? Uh, well, when does, when does the interview will come out? Uh, it should be out by, like, next week. Okay, if it's next week, I, I say uh, the 22nd, June 22nd, at Songbird again. At and Songbird he was, again. You was at the Songbird show. I was at the Songbird show. That was a super dope show. Um, and when my boy told me you was at the show, I was like, oh, man, I definitely got to do whatever she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, um, you got to show yeah. support. I completely believe in showing support before asking for anything to be done. I may, like, send out little lines at first, but anyone that I'm sending an email to or contacting – Best believe I'm going to come see you at least before we get an interview done. That, thank you. That's such a great mindset because, you know, everybody, like, I mean, just so many people, like, artists every day, like, oh, can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this feature? And it's just like they never want to, like, you know, you know, it's just like, damn, like, I feel like there should always be some kind of give and take with anything. So yeah, of course. I'm it's really a really happy issue. that you can. Yeah, of course. And I will... Try to make it to the one on the 22nd of June at Songbird. What time? Uh, Probably, you know, same-ish time. Same-ish, around 7, 8. All right, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, <clears throat> do you I'm have... opening up for somebody this time, so I think I might go on a little bit earlier than I went last time. Okay, for sure. I'll definitely um make it out and let you know if I'm right. there. But do you have any advice for any type of youth trying to do the same thing that you're doing? Um, yeah, I say to be, like, uh, I say, like, though, you know, the power is always in our hands because of the internet now, so I say if you, like, really work hard to make, like, one piece of, like, super dope content, and then you feel like you gotta leverage your friends to, like, share it and get people to know about it, but, you know, just, like, okay, you make something that's super dope, then your friends are going to want to share it because it's you. So it's like, okay, how do I get my friends to all share this thing? And then soon, you know, a hundred plays or whatever you're doing, like a couple hundred looks turns into a couple thousand, then a couple ten thousand, and then it just keeps spreading. But just make really good content and then, you know, use your friends to help share it if you don't got no connects. And that's pretty much what I did. Okay. Um, it's always, I feel like with creatives, you're always trying to put out more and more content, but it's about getting better with the content that you put out. And like yeah. you were just talking about with that reciprocation of artists between artists, um, you gotta like, just like you will go out and post some stuff. You should go out and share your friend's stuff. So I 100%. think that is some great advice to the future, but, um, I think that's about it interview with me nah, be honest, like, it's, it's, it's actually really exciting really i'm because you, you, you just work so hard like you know you work your whole life like at your class and then if somebody appreciates your class like that's really exciting yeah of course and i yeah. appreciate when artists um reach out and correspond and support it's all about reciprocation so i'm looking forward to seeing you on the 22nd 
Yeah, and, and, and just let me know when this drops so I can make sure I share it on, on everything and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it, Foggy. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a great day. It should be out by, like, next Friday at max. Okay. Okay.